This is going to be a demonstration uh, using motion tweens to create a bouncing ball effect. The first thing I want to do is I want to grab my oval tool and I want to hold shift, click and drag to keep the constraints and then I go ahead and I just delete the outline of it. I'm going to grab my gradient or uh, my paint bucket tool and change it to a circular gradient. So this way it adds some type of depth to the ball, gives it a little bit of lighting, some shadow. And I grab my arrow tool. I'm going to change the name of the layer to ball. I am also going to create a new layer called ground. And I'm going to drag that underneath the ball. Um, select the line tool, hold shift to keep it a horizontal line. And now I've got my ball layer and my ground layer. I'm going to go out to about 80 frames, right click, and I'm going to go to insert frame. I'm going to lock my ground layer. I'm going to right click on the ball layer, create motion tween, and then it's going to ask you to convert to a symbol. Click OK. I'm going to rename my uh, symbol. It's always a good practice to do. MOV underscore ball because it's a movie symbol. And now the layer is a uh, motion tween and I can begin to make adjustments and change the position of this ball. Go ahead and grab your selection tool. I got one out to about 10 frames and um, I'm just placing the ball at about every 10 frames. I'm not too concerned with weight and timing at this moment. I'm just trying to get the effect I need. So, yeah, about every 10 frames, go ahead and um, make your ball bounce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just go ahead and change the position for every um, frame that you need it to. And I'm going to have mine bounce off of the screen. So it's going to start off the screen and finish off the screen. So it looks like it's just bouncing across. Off the stage, excuse me. So I'm just making a minor adjustment here on frame 60. Um, and then the great thing about the motion tween, uh, go ahead and play it. One, you can just click and drag and it creates all the in-betweens for you. The other thing is you can start to uh, make some changes to the actual motion um, path of this uh, bouncing ball. So go ahead and you'll notice there's a little curvature line underneath the arrow and you can begin to bend your um, path. Which is really nice. Um, it makes it much easier for you. You don't have to go in there frame by frame and adjust the position of the in-betweens, it just does it for you. So you can go ahead and just start bending that path. And you'll start to get the more of a rounded bounce, more realistic style bounce. And do this for all of them. And then the next thing you can do, you can start to change the position of uh, the height You'll see the right angle underneath it, and that will allow you to just change the height of it. Well, you can also move it horizontally, but you don't really want to do that. Um, unless you absolutely need to. I'm just going to go ahead and play with these to make the ball bounce uh, a little bit more realistic. So now we've got that. I'm going to go ahead and play it, make sure it looks good. So you got your bouncing ball. And you go. Now I want you to insert keyframe on the frames that you've already moved it. You'll see the little diamond. Um, that will that's initially your 
uh, keyframe for it but you want to make sure you go over each diamond and on the timeline right click insert keyframe um, and then select all uh, by doing this you're going to save yourself um, a headache by uh, the ball will not um, the constraints will be the same size once we start adding the uh, squash and stretch effect in and you won't have any issue with the ball being a different size or shape on each uh, key pose of this bouncing ball so go ahead and right click on each one insert keyframe all it's very important that you do that okay and then just go ahead and scrub it to make sure that there's no um, issues with it it's always good to do that scrub it every once in a while to make sure nothing funny happened it, some things uh, by doing something it may adjust the animation in uh, earlier frames so it's always good to double check I'm going about um, I'm probably gonna do two frames ahead of it I'm go to insert keyframe all on each um, contact point where the ball makes contact with the ground do exactly what we just did just do it two frames before and two frames after each contact point and insert keyframe oh I didn't need my two extra keyframes there I'm just going to control Z those two only needed on the contact points insert keyframe all extremely important that you do this um, on each point where you want to make adjustments to this ball so with the squash and stretch effect we will um, be making some adjustments uh, to the size and the position of this ball and go ahead and do this for each one each contact point so I got two more to add and two frames after insert keyframe oh. let's go ahead and play it well not yet we're gonna make adjustments to the ball so here's your first squash and stretch so just before and then the contact point you're going to squash and stretch it horizontally by doing this um, here you're going to squash and stretch it vertically and this just makes it appear like a bouncing ball like a, a rubber ball or something and as it's um, falling to the contact point it's going to pick up momentum so it might stretch a little bit and it's a little cartoony for this but that's what we're going for right now and then squash and stretch it on the contact point reposition it so it's on the ground line go ahead and squash and stretch it on the way up so you get this bouncing ball effect squash and stretch it on the diamond just before the contact point vertically here you're going to squash and stretch it horizontally and reposition so it's on the ground line here you go again on vertically Squash and stretch, and do, do this for each one. Um, go ahead and adjust the position of it. And one more. So now you have 
your bouncing ball. Go ahead and play it. Make sure it's looking like a bouncing ball. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna show you how to uh, move frames. So if you want to adjust the timing of it or anything, so I'm going to click on the diamond, uh, click and drag, and you'll notice a little dotted square box, and that allows you to uh, slide it left and right. I'm just taking my uh, squash and stretch just before the contact, and I'm making it one frame just before contact. So if you wanted to adjust the weight and timing of any of the entire animation, you can start playing around with that. Um, but there's your bouncing ball. It's uh, motion tween makes it much easier to do um, versus having to do all the in betweens manually. And just export it as a Swift. Control Enter to do that, and you got your bouncing ball. So, that's about it for the bouncing ball motion tween.